Welcome back to my channel. And for today, I'm going to be taking a look at this pair of beautiful Navy Chrome XL diesel boots from Grant Stone. To be transparent with everyone, these boots were sent to me free of charge just to review. I had these on my radar for quite a long time actually, but there were a couple concerns I had that I wasn't sure if they would be right for me. The reasons I wanted to try these is number one, I really like the color. It's a really interesting color that I just don't see from any other manufacturer. The second reason is that they're Chrome XL. I do not own any pairs of Grant Stone that are in Chrome XL. I wanted to see if it would be easier for me to break in a pair of Grant Stones that are made of Chrome XL instead of Kudu or Minerva. Now, I still have my other two pairs of Grant Stone boots. I don't want to sell them because they're just really well made. They look great, but secretly they've been quite difficult for me to wear frequently because the main reason is that I had an injury in 2022, which required a minor surgery. But when I was recovering from that surgery, the nerves in my leg were a little bit sensitive to boots that were more stiff. So unfortunately I couldn't really wear Grant Stone very much in the last really year and a half. But on the other hand, I recognized that they were a very high quality boot and I liked the way they looked. So I figured I'd give it some more time after I, you know, more fully healed. So the goals that I'm trying to find out with this pair is number one, is having a pair of Chrome Excel boots from Grant Stone going to be easier to break in? Number two, did I win the Chrome Excel lottery with this pair? And number three, is this the best pair of Grant Stone boots that I've bought for my needs so far? But in order to find out the answer to those questions and more, there's a catch. You'll have to watch the rest of my video. Now, I just want to be clear that even though this is essentially a sponsored video, there's no restrictions on what I can say. Of course, with Grant Stone, you know the quality is not going to be an issue, but I'm still going to be honest with my viewers. I'm going to tell you what I think are the strengths and if there's any concerns with this boot. So let's get started. So to begin with, let's talk about the design of the diesel boot. How is it different from the Edward that I already own? They are both plain toe boots, but they differ in some subtle ways. The diesel is overall more casual. First of all, the eyelets are definitely larger than the Edward and you only have four of them as opposed to five. But one thing in common with the Edward is that the diesel also has three speed hooks, but they do look different in that they have this like little claw-like design that makes it a little more casual than the Edward boot. But what's also kind of nice is that both the eyelets and the speed hooks are made of nickel. A lot of the time you just don't see this in boots. The tongue is gusseted up to about the third lacing hole, with the Edward, it's not gusseted, so that's one difference between the two boots. They're both plain toes, so pretty much identical in that regard. However, on the diesel, you do have this heel cup, and then there's a slightly different design at the very back of the boot. But probably the most obvious thing that I noticed about the diesel versus the Edward, and not many people have talked about this, but I noticed that there's no rolled piping on the diesel boot. There is rolled piping on the Edward. It's very small, but it's definitely there. But on the diesel, it's completely not there. It's just a raw edge. So you definitely get a more casual look with the raw edges of the leather being exposed. And then you can see the contrast in between this and the rich color of the leather. One other little difference between the Edward is that it's partially aligned with the Navy Chrome XL where the lacing area is on the inside and Edward does not do this. Now, let's talk about the outsole and the welt. This is a flat welt, and my other Grant Stone boots, they have a reverse welt. This beautiful flat welt has very nice detail, and there's very nice wheeling done on this pair. Even though this is a flat welt, it's still on the more wider side. That's just one thing about Grant Stone that you have to like if you're going to buy their boots. All of their boots have a wider welt. The reverse welts are even more wide. Now, some people really don't like this. It took me some getting used to, but it's sort of like a slightly exaggerated version of Alden welts. 
and it's something that just gives Grant Stone part of their unique look. The sole is also very well made. Now, they do not use day night. They use their own studded rubber sole, but it's comparable, and I think it doesn't really feel all that different from day night. Maybe slightly more firm, but not a big difference. Below the brown flat welt, and it's a nicely thick midsole, which adds to extra support and comfort. And then in the back where the heel stack is, you have an actual stack of real leather with rubber. There's no leather board in the heel stack. There's no leather board in the midsole. There's very little artificial materials in a Grant Stone product. Steve from Beto has recently pointed out that one of the Grant Stone boots had a little bit of cardboard in where the pour on area is in the heel stack. And then others have pointed out that there's a small amount of synthetic material in the toe structure to keep the toe structure strong. No other manufacturer on the market puts as much leather into a boot as Grant Stone does for the same price range. So if buying something that is almost entirely made up of leather is important to you, Grant Stone would be one of the best choices. Another thing worth mentioning is that the heel counter is made up of leather as well. There's no plastic or leather board, it's just entirely leather. But the leather heel counter is something that you have to kind of think of as a trade-off. I'll get to that later. And then on the inside of the boots, you have this very nice high quality lining, which is definitely a step above what like Allen Edmonds is using in their boots. And then Grant Stone always uses a pour on heel sock liner, very similar to what Alden uses. And then in the ball in the front area, you have a full grain leather sole. Now, in regards to sizing, what would I recommend? I think almost everybody is going to go down a half size from their usual size. So if you're usually a size eight, like I am, go down to a size seven and a half. When I size down a half size, this boot fits perfectly. I can just tell this is the only size that would work for me. And even so, the boots still feel very generous in the ball area. There's a little bit of extra room on the sides of your feet. So your feet are definitely not going to get squished in this Leo last. The heel area is nicely snug, but not too much. I wouldn't say it's a super high instep boot, but it's definitely more accommodating than like the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill. Speaking of the Higgins Mill, the Leo last does remind me a lot of the Allen Edmonds 1757 last. They do look quite a bit different if you really compare them closely, but just the overall thing of what Grant Stone was going for, they were obviously going for a last that's gonna fit most men that has a little bit of extra room in the ball area. The Leo Last is slightly more dressy looking than the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill, although I wouldn't say it's a big difference. But then Grant Stone boots do look a little bit wider because of the exaggerated welts. One of my biggest concerns before I got this boot was that I wasn't sure if it was going to work with denim and jeans. But once I received them, I realized it does actually work with most jeans. I think it will work fine. Anytime you have a piece of blue footwear, you're kind of a little bit weary if it's going to work with jeans or denim. I think because this has quite a bit of green in it, it will work with a lot of jeans. It works with these lighter jeans that I'm wearing here. and it works beautifully with this darker denim. It will also work well with these orange chinos. But I found that mixing it with other kinds of green chinos, it just looks like it clashes a bit, so I probably would not wear it like this. But other than that, I think you'll have a pretty easy time pairing this boot, especially if you're wearing it with jeans. Now, one of the things I do not get is, why are they called navy? I mean, this really doesn't look like navy to me. It's really more of like a teal color or maybe turquoise, but navy? Is this because Horween describes this as navy leather? It's definitely not what I think of as navy. 
And just for comparison, you can see this Alden boot here. This is in a very dark color of Navy Chrome XL. And then this pair of Quaddy boat shoes is also in a similar shade of Navy Chrome XL. The Alden and the Quaddy do not have any green in them. But the Diesel definitely has a lot of green in it. Ah, yes. Let's talk about the Chrome XL lottery. I'll tell you the truth is that my very first pair of boots were the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill boots in brown Chrome XL. And because those creased so perfectly, I thought that all Chrome XL would crease that way. So I was very surprised to find out that's not always the case. Some pairs I seem to have won the Chrome XL lottery with this darker Alden Navy boot. But with my pair of Caswell boots in olive Chrome XL, one of the boots definitely had the undesirable creases. Sometimes they're called loose grain. I don't know if that's totally true, but most people don't want this when they buy a Chrome XL boot. Eh, not a big deal. I mean, I'd prefer if it's not there, but I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. Now, most of the time when you win the Chrome XL lottery, you will know after the first or second wear, because if there's going to be major creases, they usually develop right at the beginning. But this is not always true. This pair of Alden plain toes that I've had, they later developed these very deep creases on one of the shoes, and it took two years for them to develop there. So I thought I was in the clear with this pair, but sometimes even two years later after wearing the shoes a lot, these big creases can develop. So you never really know for sure if you're in the clear. Now, Another thing to consider is that Grant Stone boots do tend to weigh a little bit more than other boots. Just for comparison, I weighed this diesel boot against many other boots. It weighed just over 1.7 pounds per boot. And then you can see the Allen Edmonds is a lot lighter. And then compared to the Alden, you can see it's more than the Alden. It's also a little bit heavier than the Caswell. So the thing to know is that Grant Stone is going to be heavier than some of the other major brands. Having said that, I do not really notice the difference when I'm walking in the boots. Now, one of the things to consider with Grant Stone too is that they just tend to start off a lot more stiff. There's just something about the construction of Grant Stone. I'm not sure if it's because they use thicker leathers than other manufacturers, or if it's more to do with the construction process, but every Grant Stone I've had is like built like a tank. You'll definitely notice they're more stiff and more sturdy than a lot of the other brands like Alden or Allen Edmonds. Now, one of the other things that people have commonly complained about with Grant Stone is that when they're breaking them in, they do experience heel slip. Now, I believe the reason this happens is because the heel counter is made of thick leather. And for me, if I don't fasten my lacing tight enough, I definitely will feel my heel slip up and down. You see, if there's one point to my video that I think is the most important, it's that Grant Stone are different from all my other boot brands. I can wear an Alden boot or an Allen Edmonds or a Caswell and I can have the laces be a little bit loose and it won't bother me very much. But with Grant Stone, this is impossible. You have to have the laces be very snugly tied because if you don't, not only are you going to feel a lot of heel slip, but you're going to feel your foot sliding a little bit throughout the boot. The break-in process is going to be much worse if you do not have the laces snug. And everyone who's tried Grant Stone probably knows exactly what I'm talking about. But I will say that with this boot especially, after the first three wears, I really didn't notice the heel slip very much. But it's definitely something that a lot of people experience with Grant Stone because of the leather heel counter. Now, Grant Stone is a brand that often gets compared to Alden which is not surprising considering that it was inspired by Alden, but I would argue though, it's a very, very different brand in terms of how it feels. It's really its own unique animal. Even though it may have 
similarities to Alden in appearance. It's definitely a very different kind of experience. I think of Grant Stone as like a hybrid of a dress boot and a work boot. They're really not a work boot, but they're so well made that they're going to feel somewhat like a work boot, if that makes sense. What brand would I say is kind of like Grant Stone in terms of the sturdiness? Maybe like Crockett and Jones, but I think Grant Stone are even a little more sturdy than that. As of May 16th, while I'm working on this video, I've worn these boots five times so far. So I wanted to get as much wear as I could while I was making this review, but I can already tell you it's been a night and day difference with this leather. Chrome Excel is just a lot easier to break in than the Minerva or the Kudu. I think if I had owned the Minerva and the Kudu as a shoe instead of a boot, I think it would have been a lot easier for me to break in because when you have those leathers that are really stiff and tough like the Minerva, it rubs against your instep and your ankle area. It just takes a long time for that area to soften up. The Nose Bros recently put out a review this week where he talked about how his pair of Minerva boots, the field boots from Grant Stone, he described it as like fighting a dead cow once you start walking in them. And that's a really good way of putting it because Minerva is really, really tough leather. It takes a long time to break in. And those first like 10 wears or even more, it's gonna take a while to break in. Similarly with Kudu, it also takes a long time to break in, at least for me. But with the Chrome XL, this really takes a very little time after wearing these just three times, they feel really, really good. I don't feel any pain anymore. So even though Grant Stone makes their boots very sturdy and strong, this is still Chrome XL. It's still going to soften up very quickly, just like it does with any other manufacturer. So I was relieved to find out that these boots are a lot easier for me to wear than the other Grant Stone boots. I'm going to be able to get a lot more use out of this pair just because it's a lot easier on my feet. Now, I know most men watching this are probably going to think, eh, this doesn't really matter. It's just some of us like me have more sensitive feet from issues that we've had with injuries and stuff like that. But the vast majority can probably just ignore this part because you most likely won't have any issues other than some minor break in pain. Now, if you had to choose between Grant Stone's Diesel and the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill or the Caswell boot, which one should you choose? Well, I will just compare these in a few areas. In terms of support, the Grant Stone and the Caswell are on an equal level. I would say the Caswell maybe has a slightly better shape for me, but the overall support nearly feels identical because you have a steel shank you have the pour on sock liner heel, and then you have the full grain leather insole. In terms of support and feel, they're gonna feel pretty much the same in regards to Caswell and Grant Stone. But in comparison to the Higgins Mill, the Higgins Mill is gonna give you a lot more comfort out of the box. It has a full pour on insole, which I do appreciate a lot. But if you're looking for the most supportive boot, the Higgins Mill is not it. It doesn't have a steel shank. There's leather board in the heel stack. There are some more synthetic materials in it. That doesn't really bother me that much, to be honest, but I'm just saying, if you're looking for the most support, the Higgins Mill is probably not what you want. But if you want something that feels more comfortable instantly, it's gonna be more soft in general, and it's also lighter, then maybe the Higgins Mill is the right choice for you. In regards to instep room, I've already said, I think the Leo Last is better for me than the 1757. I just find there's a little more instep room in that area. But if you have a lower volume foot, maybe the 1757 would be your best choice. And then you have to think about weight. Both the Allen Edmonds and the Caswell are more similar in weight, whereas the Grant Stone's a little bit heavier. If that's an issue for you, you definitely want to consider that. One other small advantage I noticed with the Diesel versus the Edward is that it's easier to take off the boots and quicker to put them on. Now, is there anything I would change about the Diesel? Well, there's really nothing wrong with this boot. It's a very good boot. 
But if I were to change one minor thing, I would get rid of the raw edge on the throat and the lacing. I would replace that with a black piping. I think if the boot had black rolled piping, it would look stunning. Or maybe even dark brown piping. That's the only thing I could think of that I would change. But as far as everything else on it, I don't think there's a need to change anything else on it. I mean, if you wanted to have five eyelets, maybe go with the Edward because it's going to be a little bit more dressy. But really, it's not that different. And the only other thing I might change is that I wish Grant Stone had this boot available with a leather sole. But on the other hand, there really is no difference in comfort with this and my other boots that have a leather sole. They're pretty much the same. Now, it wouldn't be fair for me not to mention that the boot comes with these rawhide leather laces. They look really nice on the boot, and most people seem to like them with the rawhide laces. I'm just not a big fan of leather laces. I just prefer cotton. It's just easier for me to wear. It's more comfortable. Grant Stone fortunately gives you a pair of black cotton laces as well. These are semi-waxed, smaller black cotton laces. But I found these work really well on the boots. They're very comfortable. Uh, when I was breaking them in, I wore these. These thicker black laces that you see here, these are from one of my Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill boots. I'm not gonna keep these on them. Even though they look nice, I'm not gonna keep these on them because they're just not as comfortable. I'm going to swap them out with a pair of Guarded Goods laces, probably in black. I think the black semi-waxed laces from Guarded Goods will probably be the best fit for this boot. But you could also use dark brown laces. And that's what's nice about this boot is that it's fairly flexible because of the color of the sole and the welt being black and brown. You could choose either black or brown for the laces. It just depends on, you know, what you want. Another thing that was kind of strange about this pair is that the insole of the boots it was more comfortable than my other pair of Boris Kudu boots. I don't know why, but this one was just a little bit more forgiving. I just felt like I'm not feeling my toes as much. The Forest Kudu boot that I have, it has the same outsole and the same insole, yet it feels more hard for some reason. This could just be variation within the manufacturing. That's what I'm assuming it is. Anyway, it's been very easy for me to wear this boot so far. So... If you're wondering, would I consider another pair of Grant Stone boots or shoes in the future? Absolutely yes, but for me, I'll probably have to stick to the softer leathers like Chrome XL. It just doesn't seem to work out as well for me when I have those other leathers like Minerva. And this is kind of a bummer for me to say that because I really like the way the Storm Kudu looks, the Diesel and Storm Kudu, but... Now that I know my experience with Kudu has not been so good with boots, I'll probably have to pass on this because I think it's just going to be too difficult for me to break in. So, how would I rate this boot overall? Well, let's talk about a couple areas. Comfort. I would say on a scale of 1 through 10, these are a 9 after wearing them at least two times. They are very, very comfortable as comfortable as the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill boot, which surprised me. That was probably the biggest surprise. I was expecting these to be a little bit less comfortable. Now there already have been several reviews about this exact same boot, and you can just find them on YouTube. But one of the ones that stood out most to me was by Elizabeth Grant. She made a point in her video saying that this diesel boot was as comfortable as the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill. I was very doubtful when she said that, but now that I've tried these boots in Chrome XL, I agree with her. They really are as comfortable as a pair of Allen Edmonds, at least to my feet. And my feet are a little bit more on the sensitive side. In terms of appearance, I really like them. I'd give them a 9. I'd probably give them a 10 if they had, you know, the rolled piping on them. But they're still a really nice looking boot in a color that's very unusual. How would I rate these in terms of uh, easiness to break in, well, I'd give them a seven. There is going to be some pain at the beginning, but it's a lot better than what you're going to get in the other Grant Stone leathers like Minerva. So a lot of you are probably asking, are these worth the price tag of 395 USD? Well, even though I got these at no charge, I have to say, yes, there's no question about it. 
I mean, you're not going to find a better quality boot out there for this price. And considering that these cost even less than the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill at full retail, they're really an outstanding value. But if $395 is too much for you, um, I would say maybe try to find a pair secondhand on you know the third party websites. But even selling as used, Grant Stone does tend to hold their value better than some brands like Allen Edmonds. You'll see that. They're still selling for over $200 in many cases. The amount of quality you get would cost you six or $700 in the USA if you were to buy you know, a made in USA boot with this level of quality. So I'm gonna give them a 10 in terms of the value for what you pay. I know some people are going to refuse to buy Grant Stone regardless because they are made in China. Well, that's just true. They are made in China. But I encourage everyone to research the factory in which they work because their factory is very different than a lot of the other manufacturing that goes on in China. That's all I'm going to say about it. How would I rate the Leo Last compared to the 1757 from Allen Edmonds? Well, I think both of those lasts are going to work fine for the majority of men. They are designed to fit most people. Um, I would say that the Leo is probably a little bit better fitting for me because it has more instep room. Um, overall, though, they're pretty similar, and I like both the lasts very much. But in comparison to, say, the Caswell Wayne last, it's definitely wider in the ball area. And you can see in the photos here, that the Grant Stone, I'm not really touching the edges of the upper so much, but in the Caswell, you can see my foot is definitely pushed out more towards the wall of the upper. But on the other hand, the Caswell is a little bit more dressy looking. So it all depends on what is it you're going for. And after three wears, I don't know how I managed to do this to all of my heels. If somebody out there watching this can explain this, I don't know how this happens to all of my heels on my boots. Is it something I'm doing when I'm walking? I don't know. So to answer the questions at the beginning of this video, was this boot a lot easier to break in because it was Chrome XL? Yes, no question about it. Huge difference. So much easier for me to break in than the Minerva or the Force Kudu. Number two, did I win the Chrome XL lottery with this pair? Yes. So far, at least. But at least at the beginning, it's showing good signs that it probably will not happen. Just looking at these creases, they're very small and fine, which is what I want. Chrome Excel does have a tendency to change, and there's always a possibility that there could be deeper creases in the future. So you never know for sure. But I would say most of the time, if you lose the Chrome Excel lottery, you're going to lose it on the very first wear. Not always but most of the time. And number three, are these my favorite Grant Stone boots to date? Yes, no question about it. The reason is comfort is king. These are just so much easier for me to wear. I'm gonna get a lot more use out of this pair than my other two. Even though I love the way the other twos look, this one is just so much easier to wear for me. Now, I like these so much that I'm even considering buying the Diesel in Natural Chrome XL or maybe the Dune. I'm kind of torn between the Dune and the Diesel in Natural Chrome XL. So, I want to thank Grant Stone for being very generous to send me this pair of boots at no charge. Really appreciate it. These are really nice boots. And I also want to mention that I do have an affiliate link below this video, so if you purchase a pair of Grant Stone boots, you could use that affiliate link and I might get a small cut of the commission. It's totally optional, but it doesn't cost you anything extra to use it. So I hope you got something useful out of this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon on the next video.